Hey guys, this is the second episode of Moon Dogs. Uh, if you're coming from Ivy's show Dungeons and Dysphoria, welcome to the channel. Hope you enjoy your stay. If you're not aware of Dungeons and Dysphoria, uh, I'm going to put a link to it in the description. Uh, it's a whole lot of fun. I had so much fun being on it, and uh, it really is a testament to the fact that you don't have to be a very good GM to get on radio, which is pretty cool. This episode we talk about uh, the favourite people that we like to play with and what the perfect party of specific people would be. Obviously, hopefully, you don't know any of the people we're talking about. We tried to phrase it in a way that you don't need to know who we're specifically talking about, but more the type of player that they are. A lot of people ask on Reddit and Wizards of the Coast boards and that kind of thing how to be a good dungeon master or how to be a good player. This is our way of talking about that. It's something that I don't see talked about on a lot of larger YouTube channels. Uh, or if it is, let me know because I eat that shit up. Anyway, uh, I've rambled on a little bit. I hope you enjoy it. I do want to apologize for the sound issues. If you can see, we don't. We only recently got a microphone stand, and that's only because Alex's brother gave him one for Christmas, which does mean that every time we touch the table for any reason, uh, it picks up on the microphone. We touch the table a lot. I do have to wrap this up though because we are in a historic heat wave in Perth, uh, and I had to turn the fan off to do this, so let's, let's just, I'm gonna get this done. Favorite parties of people to play with. Mm. Now, this could be contentious because we're going to be talking about real life mates mm -hmm. and how shit they are. Yeah, I'm just saying. Like my my whole pitch for one of my people is he's shit, he's shit, but like he's fun. <laughs> but, um, so my one I kind of came at it with um, so Magic the Gathering's like lead designer Mark Rosewater puts out these awesome game design articles. Like back when I used to care about that shit. Yeah. Um, where he talks about like player archetypes that they use that they duck the design for. Yeah. Um, and I think that kind of like, and then I also thought about it as like a heist movie. Like you've got to have the old vet who's only got one more good game in him. Ah, uh, that's Darren. Um, <laughs> um, you, you have the young gun who like doesn't know how it goes. So they come up with crazy shit. Yep. That was you. Yeah. Like, a year ago. Um, mm. Then you've got- Yeah, it's Draco. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Um, you've, got, you've got like the main character, which is me, obviously. Naturally. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm always the main character. Um, <laughs> Um, you've got the, the guy who, like, is pure comic relief right up until you need him, and then he, like, snaps into it. you got, you got the guy who's, like, pure comic relief until, like, you need them for, like, an emotional scene or, yeah. like, to get something done. Um, and that's Sava. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. like... Yeah, if you need someone to hit for 48... Well, Sava's when, when he does hit. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. It's comic relief. Like, Sava played this character where he was just, like, oversized great sword. He's like, I can I can move, like, five feet per turn. But when I get there... <laughs> His fucking name, Beedolf Gidwell. Yeah. It was literally just... <laughs> like, just All right. Like, <laughs> the stupidest shit. But in that 5e game we played, it's similar. He was mm. playing the most edgy, like, I'm yeah. an 11 year old dark elf girl That's, and I just yeah. stab people and I'm made of shadow. Like, oh, I'm so edgy. But then, like, like a character died and he was like, like, oh, full on tantrum time. Like, yeah. in character. Like, laughing, like, like, we're having a good time, but his, like, my character storms out and it's now gone missing in the CD city. Yo. 11 year old girl. Missing in CD City, and all of a sudden we're all like, "Oh shit, stakes!" Yeah. Like, we're, wait, we're playing this fantasy game, and it's like, "Yeah, she is the eleven-year-old assassin." Like, it's Arya Stark, but then it's like, "No, she's an eleven-year-old who thinks she's an assassin, and now she's lost in the fucking scum place." <laughs> yeah. And then suddenly everyone's like, "Where's the child?" <laughs> yeah. Um, sick. <laughs> and that's what it comes down to. I think is my favorite parties are the ones that. Because the way the way that I design characters, as not not like mechanically, not build build wise, I always talk to my GM and I say, "This is where I, I have a couple of ways I think my character could grow to." Right? Mm -hmm. um, like with the Wookiee in your Star Wars game, yep. I was like, they could like redeem themselves, or they could just go nuts. Yep. Like um, they could fall into that Wookiee rage, and that's what happened. Like yep. that's how they died. Like, um, and that's I like having like as well with that. You you had spoken to me about it and basically had like if if my character needs to die, 
I'm not going to feel that because yep. it makes sense. And that was really good in terms of like a party compromised of like, if someone is playing a character that could potentially be difficult, they have that note with the DM where they're like, yeah, if- it Kill if me it, off. Kill me off. Like yep. if like a hundred percent, if this happens, like it, it does not make sense for my character to not be antagonistic. And if that does happen, kill them off. Like I love them, but kill them off. That's their yep. story. I'm so attention to shit talk people. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and, and that's the thing. So my favorite party dynamic will always be one that changes my character, how my character yeah. perceives the world. Yeah. Because a fundamental part of these games in like the modern era is that you level up and change, right? Yeah. You, you're like, I now know a new spell. And now I also know how to love. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, like what you were saying about Sala, like I don't actually know that that happened, but I really like I really like that because it's, it takes away from the, all right, we fight this monster. All right, we move through, we pick this lock, uh, we fight this monster and this treasure. Well, that's the thing. It's, and again, it, like he, he fully just changed the game. He was like, you've got to now go find me. Games, yeah. games are only as role play as the players. Like, yeah, the DM facilitates it, but if the players aren't willing to like go into it, then it doesn't happen. Like you could have the most interesting world, but if the players don't go out there and explore it, they just it, sit there waiting for you to throw the next monster at exactly, them. Exactly. Yeah. What were you about to say? <laughs> um, no, um, when basically, so like you can build whatever world you want, but the players are the ones who actually explore it, and like it, it is like it isn't all up to the players to role play. But it is like it is an equal share between the DM and the players. So if you're playing with a party of four, it's twenty percent everyone's job. Like yeah. the DM needs to go with it, and they need to like facilitate. But the players still need to actually do it, and that's why when I'm DMing, I love I love having players that I can be like I'm I'm you know just I'm preparing this next section. You guys talk amongst yourselves, and like and you guys will do it in character. Get to know each other, and it'll be shit where yeah. suddenly someone will just be like, "Yeah, my mum was killed by like this, this, and this," and then they'll be like, "Oh yeah, no, I grew up with a guy who you know dressed in that same dark cloak," and then suddenly I can be like writing notes, and I'll just be like, "Dark cloak man killed mother, <laughs> yeah. excellent," and then like bring that in later, and it's like it's good to just sometimes you do just let the parties talk amongst themselves, let them create the scenarios, because then that just keep them. Keep them talking. They'll, they'll come up with something eventually. Like, there were sessions where like, it would get to the point where I'd be like, okay, guys, like, you all need to wrap up now because, like, we need to progress. Like, yeah. it's stuff where it's, like, it, it's great. Like, I just, yeah. I'm so bad with that as well because a lot of the time when I prep a session, I'm like, these are the things that, like, I hope happen. I'm always gonna, I'm always like, oh, I'm gonna try and, like, um... Oh, I hope this fucking Wendigo finds Julie. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I but, love Wendigos. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ooh, that was Wendigo. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, it's a Wendigo. <laughs> um, it's yeah, right. that was our <laughs> Scooby-Doo Manticore friend with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, so like when I, um, a, a big part of how I prep a session is like, obviously when you prepare, you're, you're not going to be... I'm not good enough to be like, I'm just gonna show up and like what happens happens. Like, yeah, right, yeah. I've tried that in the past and they almost always flop. I'm not good enough for that. Mm. So I I prep things that will happen, yeah. like maybe or maybe not. Yep. And then on the day, I'm so stressed about like it being a good session, <laughs> right? Because you don't want the session where it's like, you I know you this out. for the next section. This is the next session. Yeah. Section. Get fucked. <laughs> yeah, you went. We can no. Um, <laughs> um, well, yeah, all, all I was trying to say is that, like, I prepare stuff and then I get paranoid. I'll never get to it. Right. And then yeah. lose it forever. So I'm like... <laughs> Uh, and so, like, people, like, having a great time, like, oh, we're in the tavern, we're really, like, just getting to know the characters, we're, like, having fun, and I'm like, oh, and a guy comes in with a gun! <laughs> like, like, because I'm just like, oh, I gotta, like, keep it flowing, keep it moving. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, cool. Um, yeah, alright, so, yeah, back to favourite parties. Yeah. Um, so, my actual list, based on that big tangent we just did. Yep, yep. Alec running it, mm -hmm. um, because you're my favourite... DM. Thank you. Um, <laughs> mostly because of like, your ability to just fucking improv when you got it. Yeah. Improv entire quest lines. Yeah, Like, <laughs> like off the top. <laughs> the genuinely built different. Um, Luke, because you, um, you know how to, like, play into a bit better than anyone else. Um, 
myself because I like to play it in the parties that I play in. Okay. <laughs> um, pretentious, but all right. Yeah, yeah, you know, like <laughs> I'm one of the favorite players that I've ever played with because I get to do the game that I'm playing. Mm. Um, Sava, like I said, because he has that like comedic relief, mm. but then when he like when it's like time to go, like he's like, cool. I'm not gonna like rule the moment with bit. I'm yep. not gonna and and like he's like. I, I'm going to make a competent character and just play them stupid. Yeah. You know? Um, and then Ollie, because Ollie will always incorporate a backstory really well. And yeah. especially something that Ollie's really good at is like having a joint backstory with someone. Like, yeah. Pirate Campaign is yeah. like, let's be brothers. Or then Carrying mm-hmm. Crown. Like, like let's, we be grow- let's be brothers. Let's be brothers. And then let's be like found family brothers. <laughs> It's always just brothers. <laughs> I think what Ollie's always got always like three sisters and just one and a brother. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely. Um, oh, God. But yeah, and it comes down to that, like, heist dynamic. Yeah. And that's why Darren's good to have in there. I, I love I, just, I yeah. cut it down to four. <laughs> My, I've not, obviously, I haven't been in many parties. Like, I've literally... Every time I'm not DMing a game, it, like, just kind of slowly falls apart. Like, from the ones that I have played, like, just the timing's never right. And it's your fault! <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> what I, think, I was like, I was, like, first playing the, the first, the only, only campaign that has gone, like, more than five levels that I've ever finished, I had to run for about, like, six months. And that was before the Carrion Crown. And it was the first time I ran Carrion Crown. And then... Immediately after we finished that game, we're all like, yeah, sweet. Now we'll be playing two campaigns at the same time. They fizzled out. Never worked. It was, yeah, it was kind of like, it, it was just, you that switch over sometimes wouldn't work with everyone. And then suddenly everyone's sick of the game or like, we don't still want to do it. Like you need that one person running the game over and over. Cause it was like, we'd go from like one consistent GM for like, we were playing for like eight hours a day at times. Some people, Darren, would get, you know, bored. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, you know, Darren has only now been diagnosed with ADHD. In, what, his, like, 50s? <laughs> 31. <laughs> Same shit. Actually, I think he's 30. <laughs> no, he's 30. He, um... And so, like... It's all right. He'll never see this. <laughs> and that's what I mean. It's like, you, you get these, like, people where... And then suddenly we'd go to, like two DMs where in the morning it's one person, in the afternoon it's the other. And so in the morning you, you're a different mood, you have lunch, you're in a different mood, but then it's like, it's the same as, and like, I'm gonna get into my uh, university background here, I'm studying teaching, but going from different teachers, like yeah. you have certain mindsets with certain people or people in charge. And when you're running a game that like is switching DMs, it just changes the mindsets of the people. And so that was that kind of issue where like you're going through too many mind changes throughout the day where it does start to feel like school. It stops being a fun game every weekend and it starts being, oh yeah, I agreed to play on the weekend. Sorry, I can't do this. I've got to go to D&D. You yeah. Know? Oh yeah, I have to do D&D. Yeah, I, I need to go and play in this campaign because like, I'm, I'm more excited for this one, but you know, this one's running first. So I got to sit through that and then get through to this next one. I got to get to my favorite class. That's... Like, that's- like a problem I've never heard of on fucking mm. I'm terminally online I can't stay off fucking reddit like mm-hmm. I've never heard of people being like oh I have to sit through my favorite game in the morning so yep. I can get to the good one in the afternoon that yeah. is like I know exactly who you're probably yeah we're playing yeah with. and that is the most I don't want to I don't want to like name names but no. that's the most specific issue I oh ever my God. Yeah, man. <laughs> and even then it, it started towards the end it was like I'm here to be polite because I don't want to hurt feelings. <laughs> Both games were starting to like fall apart. It was like, it's always that problem where when someone's got good intentions, you don't want to like rain on their parade, but like sometimes you you're gotta, still not just having a good time. You get to that point where game. suddenly you realize like it, it is your own time that you're wasting to please someone who like, it, they'll just keep going. Like, cause especially in a D&D campaign, which will take six months is like generous. If you're playing a full, like one to 15, six months is generous as a time frame. We were playing Carrion Crown for like- Oh my God. Eight months. We were still two books out from the finale. And it was like 12 hours a week. Yeah. And like, it took oh six, God. nine months. It was ridiculous. But like, the, the back to the favorite parties. I keep going yeah. into D- Cause I've only ever DM'd. Well, but- sorry, just on your thing mm. about like having to have those conversations. Mm. 
like this the, the, as, with any hobby, right? You have people mm. that are like, I'm just here to like fuck around. And you have yeah. people that are like, I'm, this is a six month commitment. And if you look at it like something like footy, mm. where you have like six month season, yeah, you have those hard conversations with people who aren't training. Or you yeah. have those conversations with people who are like, just not showing up. And it's like, mm. you're meant to be a fucking- Your like, standard needs to be here, but you're not- And it's exactly the same where you're letting everyone down. Yeah. Yeah, because it's end of the ga- end of the day. It's a team-based activity, right? It's yeah. all teamwork. But the thing is that mm. because it's not a physical one, and all, like especially in Australia, it's a very sport-based country. Yeah. If you haven't played much sports, you hear that, Dad? D and D is a sport. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't need to exercise. I exercise my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you work out? D and D. But um, that said, it's team-based, and if you haven't. It, and it's the kind of thing that does attract people that haven't been in that many team-based environments. And yeah. that's where you get people who are like, I need a lone character who doesn't work with anyone. Yeah. And it's like, oh, but you're actually not working with <laughs> Yeah. Them. Yeah. Yeah, there's one thing playing that character, but you, you just are that dude. Yeah. yeah. That's like, so... So, do, uh, yeah. like, who's your favorite team to DM for? So... If that's your, where, where that's your experience is. What I've got here, so... The, the party that I've, like, been a part of... The favorite one I had was the Unknown Armies one because everyone was just such a weird range of dynamics. Yeah, weird mix, man. But it was kind of like, it was really fun just being really weirdly creative with how we were <laughs> forced to work together. Like I was yeah. I was a hobo, Ollie was a chef. Anything out of his I pockets. Just, I just had hobo pockets. I was wearing 17 jackets. I'd be like, well, I've got a computer. Like maybe we can use this to hack the door. And everyone's like, fuck whatever, man. Like, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, you had, what was it? You had a- Hobo pockets, that was hobo my pockets. skill. It was a skill if you rolled and succeeded on yep. the skill. I got I to had do a, a, a- I had a, ch- oh no, you had a chart yeah. on a website of <laughs> random, Objects. objects. Any like, object. Yeah, and I think one time you got like a like a, a like a full on laptop. Yeah, no, it was it was like on the thing, it was like pocket computer. And yeah. I was like, can I have this? And you were like, sure, yeah. And then it was like, you know, I found a credit card. Because it was just like to recharge the skill, I had to go dumpster diving. And so it was like, yeah, I've got like this credit card and a driver's license. It's not mine, but I've got it. And then I like set up a phone plan with a phone yeah. that I found in my pocket so that the others could contact me because otherwise I'm just a hobo. And they're like, where the fuck is this guy we need to? <laughs> so it was like, oh no, I've got a phone. Yeah, you got my number. So here's the thing about that party. That was my favorite party when everyone was there. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and what I was I am gonna call someone out here. Fucking Ollie, get fucked for this campaign. <laughs> like, like I love you, man. I, I'm still gonna keep playing with you. But like, just, oh. be, just him saying, like, I had a big scene planned for him based yep. on his backstory. I was like, massive. It's going to end. I was like, and he was like, I'm gonna be there today for sure. He's been a bit flaky beforehand, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna give him benefit of the doubt. Like, um, and I'm like, this is a big like narrative and emotional scene that's going to set the rest of the game into motion that is a hundred percent based on his character, his backstory, and the relationships that he had made. We're, we're there, we're getting ready. It's about an hour after we started. I'm like just running other scenes that I'm improving, being like, it's okay. I text him, where are you? He says, on the way, right? <laughs> I'm on the way. <laughs> Like four hours later, <laughs> did not show up <laughs> at all. My favorite part is at the time I'm living with you, <laughs> and you're like, Man, I got so much planned. Like every day for yeah. like a week, Dom's like, I've got this new stuff planned. And be like, I can't talk, man. I'm in the room, I'm planning shit. Literally a full week of planning for this one specific thing, and the whole time you're improving shit and you're like checking your phone, you'd be like, Where the fuck is this guy? <laughs> and me and you, we're just like having, we're just fucking around. I think that was the yeah, point where we just started like hobo like I think was that the scene where I like broke a hobo's arm because he was like trying to encroach yeah, on my turf yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I went yeah. up while he was asleep and stabbed him in the lung then just rode off before he could catch me because instead of having a pursuit yeah. skill it was just BMX riding because that's how my <laughs> hobo got around no it was instead of driving yeah, 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 yeah. I just had BMX riding um and yeah. yeah like but but yeah and that's the thing and and it was like going into this like time skip yeah. and it's like we're setting into the new you know, it's part because the whole thing was I was like like trying to join these two pre-written modules together and this other pre-written module is the best 
module I have ever read for any system, hands down, ever. It's about connecting the entire United States and this Americana as, as the, like, gates of the, of the chakram, of, like, the body of the United States, and connecting the, like, the, like, heart chakra to this through specific McDonald's stores. And it was this massive satire on consumerism that was like incredibly relevant today despite being written 25 years ago. I've I started ranting, I've started ranting. <laughs> I'm gonna cut myself off. Okay, I'm okay. gonna stop. <laughs> but that was, that was probably like, cause that's, and other than that. Who was oh. that? That was me, you, Darren, Ollie, yep. you ran. But that's yep. the thing is like, it's, for me, it's never about the individual players because like sometimes like you play with certain players and it'll be like, like you can tell like their character just isn't, like it's not that their character's not good, but it's like the character's not something that I'm particularly interested in or like that I'm like vibing with. Whereas like Darren was his whole character was I'm angry black man, and it was like sure that's funny, but then it was like we could still use that in like he's angry because his son was murdered by gangsters, so now he's a renegade cop. But it started yeah. off as like a joking like I'm I'm the angry black man in a Mel Gibson like a little, in Lethal a Weapon. A little bit racist. A little bit of racism. A little but, bit racist. But, oh, this is no, Australia. What are we? <laughs> just a little bit of casual Aussie racism. But um, yeah, basically. Bloody true blue. <laughs> <laughs> we're not racist we're drinking Spanish Italian lagers but um that makes us more racist I think <laughs> no, it we're, we're appropriate <laughs> it's okay <laughs> whatever you want but know. probably so <laughs> my, just cut that bit out <laughs> <laughs> the favourite party that I DM'd was um it's honestly gotta be because this is how almost every single game that I've played has gone was um the revolving door carrying crown game where only one player knows what the original quest line is because it's Ollie's character just refuses to fucking die and everyone else dies Dom sometimes 13 times I what was I the final 13, count? It, it was 13, 13, total. 13. 13 total 4 in 1 session fuck oath baby and but in my defense, about five of those were because Ollie oh, was like, was... I'm, the, I'm the only character that knows what's going on. I have to live. I'm going to sacrifice you. Yeah. And then everyone else dies and no one knows what oh, he's done. It's so funny. <laughs> like, just, just playing a game like that where, like, that helps to build it. Because everyone comes in and they're like, I'm real mad at you, Ollie, but my character isn't, so <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> but it was like, and then just like... I love that because then I can like like having Ollie's character be like oh, I need I need forgiveness and then I'm like here's your spirit vision you're you're contacting your best friend from childhood who's a ghost and then his best friend goes you fucking let me die <laughs> fuck you no it and wasn't he, that he let like, me die it was that he never told my parents I was that's dead it, yeah but it's like it's like that thing where it's like I don't have to keep track of in-game stuff because I know you've been holding on to that for so fucking long <laughs> yeah. and then it was like because of that as well like with the revolving characters is like eventually you find a character that people just like love and they resonate with and then you kill that character <laughs> and then it's even more special when you get to bring it back like the ending the finale where it was just like you're alive again and you're now like a, a tool of vengeance for the god of vengeance who you had nothing to do with but she likes your she likes the cut of your gym <laughs> you're now some gumption, son. <laughs> <laughs> you're secretly a fucking herald of the god of vengeance and you're like yeah yeah i am F fuck you <laughs> because that's the thing like that specific character wolfram mm. i just poured my heart and soul into like and then like oh not only does he die but like his fucking wolf dies he can't be brought back because he's dissolved in acid because it's fucking awful <laughs> but we can resurrect his wolf as like a kangaroo we just have the kangaroo like hang out <laughs> Well, the kangaroo get fucking decapitated by a troll. All right, <laughs> like just, just like it's just. <clears throat> I love it. Oh yeah, I was, and it's uh, like I was, you can I was playing Wolfram when he died. Hey, wow. Well, um. Oh, you, yeah, yeah. He got rendered by the trolls. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, but that's that's my like my favorite DMing games is just revolving doors where the story can continue if all of the characters happen to die. And it was like, it's hard to do that with the pre-written modules because yeah. obviously like those are <coughs> stories that your characters of, but you also need to be characters invested in it. And so it's hard to do that with a lot of yeah. these like pre-written ones. But then like, if you can build a game 
like the pirate one where it, it can be a revolving door because the whole story is like I'm sure there might be an overarching plot there's surely things that affect everyone but you're a ship you're, you're a crew on a ship a bunch of pirates yeah. someone dies there's 20 other people on that ship dude I have, I have literally I have uh, when up, up until when Julius died I had five different characters on that ship yeah exactly and I could literally just pick and choose from exactly and so it's like I, I, I just I really like DMing for that as well um, especially in like a, a, a traveling type of story like Carrying Crown where you're traveling across the country to get to this point yeah. someone dies along the way and you, you can you can be like yeah in the next town someone comes up and they're like hey I'm with this secret order that you guys know about and then actually no one <laughs> no one knows that what this secret order is because the one person who was alive at the time of them discovering that secret order didn't care and didn't read the journal that they picked up so actually <laughs> no one knows what you are and you're like no just guys I'm I'm part of this secret order and they're like mm-hmm, okay buddy yeah <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, just come along. <laughs> we, you'll be here for twenty minutes max. Like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs>